All right, so this is the second lecture video on acids and bases here. We're going to be discussing Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. Oftentimes these are just referred to as Bronsted acids or Bronsted bases and they forget about poor old Lowry. But uh, the main thing here is, well first off let's uh, review uh, Arrhenius. Remember Svante Arrhenius? Uh, basically he said acids contain the hydrogen ion and that really isn't a whole lot different from what Bronsted and Lowry said. Uh, in, in their definition or their theory. But the, the main difference is uh, with bases. And of course for bases, uh, litmus, uh, uh, bases turn litmus blue, so we'll use blue here. Bases contain the hydroxide ion. That's in the Arrhenius definition. And this is very different from what you'll see in the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So first off, let's just find these acids in the Bronsted-Lowry definition here, an acid is saying, hey, you want to play catch? Do you want to take this hydrogen? Acids are proton donors. Remember, protons are hydrogen ions. So they're hydrogen ion donors or proton donors. So here he's passing off a hydrogen ion. A base in the Bronsted-Lowry theory, the Bronsted-Lowry definition, a base is a proton acceptor a proton or hydrogen ion acceptor. So unlike Arrhenius, where we had hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, there's no hydroxide ion with uh, the Bronsted base. Both acids and bases are defined in terms of what they do with hydrogen ions. And this is an important thing because uh, acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors, their opposites so I'll just write here, acids and bases in this regard are opposites. And the reason I'm writing this down is because you're familiar with other types of opposites, right? There's up and down, there's left and right, there's good and bad, there's on and off. Those are all opposites. And because of the, simply the logic of opposites, you can't define left if you don't have a right. You can't define up if you don't have a down. You can't define an acid if you don't have a base. In other words, whenever we're talking about acids and bases, they have to kind of come in pairs. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in the next slide. But what this means is acids and bases are opposite. So they, I'll just say they come in pairs. You have a, a, a donor, an acceptor which means you can't, you can't donate an a, a, a hydrogen ion if there isn't something there to accept it. All right, so let's see. Okay, we'll elaborate this more on this on the next slide. Again, acids donate protons, bases accept protons or hydrogen ions. And so here we see hydrogen chloride. Now remember, hydrogen chloride, it's an acid, right? It's got the hydrogen ion in the Arrhenius sense, but this is a gas, right? HCl hydrogen chloride is a gas. When you dissolve that gas into water, you get this guy. This is a new thing. Now this is a hydronium ion and it's in solution as is the chloride ion. Okay, So HCl dissolves in water, but it doesn't just dissolve, it actually reacts with the water. And a hydrogen ion here is getting donated to the water. So H2O becomes H3O, and this H3O is called the hydronium ion. Now remember, for Arrhenius, Arrhenius would just say, oh, well, you know, you dissolve HCl in water, you get the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion. That's not a whole lot different than what we're saying here, except we have this new hydronium ion. So we have a proton that's the same thing as a hydrogen ion, and the hydrogen ion when it's in solution, so right, it's aqueous, is when it's dissolved in water, as we have here, it's really the same thing as the hydronium ion. So proton, hydrogen ion, hydronium ion, all functionally the same thing. Uh, Bronsted-Lowry makes use of this hydronium ion. Uh, Arrhenius does not, right? So this was the Arrhenius uh, definition. All right, so HCl is donating the proton to water, water is accepting it. If it's accepting it, it's a base. And normally you don't think of water as either an acid or a base, but if you think of water, right, you can draw it this way, right, we did it this way with the uh, 
neutralization reaction is HOH, well, you can think of, okay, it's kind of like a base in the Arrhenius sense. We have the hydroxide ion, right? So water is a base, it's, but it's not generating hydroxide ions in solution. It, in this case, it's simply accepting, accepting this hydrogen ion. So we'll put a hydrogen ion on the reaction arrow here. So it's donating a hydrogen ion. Now, one thing you'll see about uh, bases, and let me go ahead and uh, draw a water molecule here. With water, we have two unshared pairs of electrons. And with HCl, what's happening here is the hydrogen is getting donated to the water, and it's actually bonding to this unshared pair of electrons. And so now we have this hydronium ion. What does that hydronium ion look like? Well, there's our water. This pair of electrons here is now essentially being shared with this hydrogen ion. We still have one unshared pair of electrons. And so this guy here now is this H3O plus this hydronium ion. So one of the things that's kind of a hallmark of Bronsted-Lowry bases is they have an unshared pair of electrons to uh, bond with the hydrogen. So bases accept a proton, that's kind of the functional definition. Another important thing to recognize here is they bind the proton or the hydrogen ion through an, that's an an, an unshared pair of electrons of electrons. Okay. So I told you we would get back to ammonia. Ammonia is a Bronsted base. Let me go ahead and draw the structure of ammonia. All right. NH3. Of course the nitrogen here has a complete octet so it has an unshared pair. This unshared pair is what makes it a base. So Bronsted-Lowry base has this unshared pair of electrons. And what's happening here now is water is donating, let me use red here, water's the acid, it's donating the hydrogen ion to this unshared pair of electrons. NH3 goes to NH4, right? So we had the hydronium ion, now we have the ammonium ion. Ammonia, ammonia, right, is NH3. Don't confuse that with ammonium. Ammonium has one extra letter and one extra hydrogen ion. So this is why I referred to uh, ammonia as a, as a base. It's accepting a proton from water, hence water is in this case acting as an acid, it's being the proton donor. This ammonium hydroxide, now both of these are in solution, so right here aqueous, right? it's aqueous. So they're in solution, but as I said before, there is no such thing as ammonium hydroxide. You might again you might see this on reagent bottles, ammonium hydroxide. I said it's really a misnomer. What you really have here is ammonia that's in solution, right? And the reason I say this is let's go back and look at uh, say sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide clearly an Arrhenius base. This is a white crystalline solid. You can dissolve that solid into water and you get sodium ions and hydroxide ions, ions in solution, right? So let's say we had this solution in water and then we heated it up and evaporated all the water. What we'd end up with, right, is an empty beaker with this solid NaOH left in it, right? So sodium hydroxide is uh, you know a, a bona fide ionic substance. Ammonium hy uh, hydroxide is not. If we tried the same thing with ammonium hydroxide, so we've got this ammonium and hydroxide ion in solution here. All right, so this is the ammonium hydroxide in solution. Uh, I don't know if I can 
squeeze that in there, ammonium hydroxide. If we heated this up, put a flame under there, boil off the water, what would we get? We'd get an empty beaker because not only would the water boil off, so we're boiling off the water. Remember, ammonia is a gas. We would also be removing the ammonia. So there is nothing left. There is no such thing as ammonium hydroxide. It's only kind of a convenience that people write that on reagent bottles. One other thing to note here about ammonium or ammonia is that we see these uh, double-headed or two directional arrows. This is an e this is equilibrium. Talked about equilibrium in the past. Often I just use a half-headed arrow like that. Same thing. Those are equilibrium arrows. One thing to be careful of, and this is a minor thing, I wouldn't uh, stress it here. This is not. <laughs> That's uh, We use that for something else. This is not what we use for equilibrium. You might see people use it sometimes, but it's really um, a poor way of doing it. There's this double-headed arrow is used for something else. Instead, we use two lines, two arrows. All right. So uh, this is an equilibrium, and what that means is this is a weak base. And we will talk more about strong acids and weak acids and strong bases and weak bases later. But because this equilibrium arrow is here, I thought I'd just comment on it now and let you know ahead of time that ammonia is a weak base. Acid-base conjugates or acid-base pairs. Again, this is only, you only see these acid-base conjugates in the Bronsted-Lowry theory. So we talk about uh, Bronsted-Lowry acid-base conjugates. Conjugate just means pair, that all, that's all it is. So acid-base pairs or acid-base conjugates, same thing. In fact, uh, conjugate acid base pairs is, is, is truly redundant. Pairs just means conjugate. So remember I said in the Bronsted-Lowry theory, acids and bases are opposite, so they come in pairs. In fact, let's just back up a second. Ammonia is donating, or sorry, water is donating a hydrogen ion to ammonia, so you can't have, ammonia can't act like a base unless there's an acid to donate a hydrogen ion to it. So that's what I meant by opposites and they have to come in pairs. You can't have you can't have an acid without a base. That is different from what we're seeing in this next slide. So when we're talking about acid base conjugates, notice and we're missing the equilibrium arrow here. Hold on. This is an equilibrium. We have reactants on the left, products on the right. The acid-base pair that they're talking about, one's a reactant, the other is a product. So that's one acid-base pair, HA and A. So HA is the, uh, the general acid. So HA we use for the general acid. And B, I'm going to put an unshared pair of electrons on there. B is our general base general or generic base. So HA is a general acid, but we could also have it say, I don't know, like uh, HF, hydrofluoric acid, right? So H for the hydrogen, F for the rest of the molecule. In this case, simple fluoride ion. So A would be the fluoride ion. All right. So this guy is donating hydrogen, it's an acid, and it's donating a hydrogen to the base, right? The base has an unshared pair of electrons. So we, uh, this is a reaction that's occurring, so A is losing its hydrogen, so it becomes A minus, right? It lost that H plus, right? So it's A minus now. The base is accepting a hydrogen, so this is a base, right? It's a base. It's accepting a hydrogen, becomes a, a B gains an H, it becomes BH plus. So acid base conjugates, notice they're on the conjugates that they're showing here are on opposite sides of the reaction arrow. One's a reactant, the other's a product. Here's the acid, here's its conjugate base. Here's a reactant, the base, 
here's its conjugate acid. So there's two acid-base pairs, or acid-base conjugates. They occur on opposite sides of the reaction arrow. A couple important things to note about acid-base conjugates. One, um, in a reaction like this, they appear on opposite sides of the reaction, right? So one's a reactant, one's a product. So the acid-base conjugates we have here are HA, here's the acid, the other acid is BH plus. Oops. The bases we have uh, B, just plain old B for the base, and then A minus, A minus, and I'm going to put an unshared pair of electrons here as well. And I will explain why that unshared uh, electron pair is there. For uh, but for right now, remember Bronsted Lowry bases, uh, the bases have an unshared pair of electrons, right? Okay, so fine these guys appear on opposite sides of the reaction arrow there's ha and a there's b and hb and the other thing to note here is that the acid base pairs only differ they they look exactly the same but they only differ by a single proton a single hydrogen ion right. so ha is the acid. What's its conjugate base? Well, it's going to be exactly the same thing, but it's going to be different by a single hydrogen. Right? HA has a hydrogen. A doesn't. B is a base. BH has a hydrogen. B doesn't. So the third thing to notice here, right? The, these acid-base conjugates, they appear on opposite sides of the reaction arrow. They only differ by a single hydrogen. The acid Right, has one more hydrogen than its conjugate base. One more hydrogen than its conjugate, I'll abbreviate that conjugate base. Right. So HA is an acid. What does its conjugate base look like? Well, it's got going to have one fewer hydrogens, right? The acid has one more, the base has one fewer. BH plus is the acid. B here, right? B is a base. What does this conjugate acid look like? Well, it's got to have one more hydrogen. It's different only by a single hydrogen. The acid has one extra hydrogen. So if you remember these three things about Brunsted Lowry acids and bases, it'll be real easy to pick them out and to identify which is the acid and which is the base. Here they're just giving uh, some examples of acid base conjugates. So HF is the acid, F minus is the conjugate base. Now, remember I told you something about the uh, how bases contain a unshared pair of electrons. Let me just go ahead and draw the Lewis structure for hydro, hydrogen fluoride. All right, so we've got fluorine here. Ding, 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 ding. And what happens when the hydrogen ion is donated, this pair of electrons in this bond stay with the fluorine, right? So what we have left is just the plain old proton, just a hydrogen ion, right? Just, a, just nothing but a, a, a naked little proton here. It lost its electrons. Where do those electrons end up? Right? That's what we had before. Those two electrons that were in that bond are now here on the fluorine and it's gained uh, normally fluorine is in group it, while it is in group seven it normally has seven valence electrons here it has eight well if it's gained an electron in that sense it's got a minus one charge so that's why i always draw bronsted bases with unshared pair of electrons and of course with water we've got a couple unshared pairs of electrons here it's gaining a hydrogen ion again just a naked little proton bonding to this unshared pair of electrons becomes a hydronium ion. Remember this word, hydronium ion. 
So you notice we, we saw water act, uh, I don't know if you think it's kind of peculiar, peculiarly, kind of, we, we saw water act strangely. So water, that's H2O, right? It has a conjugate acid. It also has a conjugate base. What did I say about conjugate acids? Well, acids have one more hydrogen ion than its conjugate base. And so if water is, okay, this is just plain old water, H2O, what would be its conjugate acid? Well, it would have an extra hydrogen. That's H3O+. plus. So here's the acid. Here's its conjugate base. So we have an acid-base pair here. Water can also act as an acid. We saw this with ammonia. It donated a hydrogen ion to ammonia to make the ammonium ion. And so the conjugate base of water right, is going to have one fewer hydrogens. This is H2O. This is just HO. So here's the base. In this case, water is acting as an acid. So water, remember I said water, right? It's HOH, it has an acid, it has a base. It has both. It can act as an acid, it can act as a base. A compound that can do that is referred to as amphoteric. So let's say can be an acid or a base. And really what that means is if it's going to act as an acid, it has to have a hydrogen ion that it can donate. If it's going to have a base, it has to have an unshared pair of electrons that can accept the hydrogen ion. So that's what water, you know, water has a couple unshared pairs of electrons. All right, learning check. Write the conjugate base for each of the following. Write the conjugate acid. A little practice here. I'll give you, uh, if you want to uh, stop the video here and try to work this out on your own, Welcome back. So a conjugate base, what does a conjugate base mean? One less hydrogen. Conjugate acid, what does that mean? One more acid, so I, the, going back to the Arrhenius definition, acids are proton, have uh, hydrogen ions, so it's one more hydrogen ion. So what would be the conjugate base? Just remove that hydrogen, it'd just be Br minus, remember to include the minus sign. Uh, H to S, remove one hydrogen, not both, just one. Here's carbonic acid. Just remove one hydrogen, not both. Now it is diprotic, but this is the acid-base conjugate. This is the hydrogen car uh, carbonate ion or the bicarbonate ion. Bicarbonate ion. Now notice the bicarbonate ion also has a hydrogen, so we'll elaborate here. We could lose one more hydrogen, right? And we get the carbonate ion. There's minus one, we lose the hydrogen, now it's minus two. Carbonate's minus two. So fine, here's an acid base conjugate. Here's the acid, here's its conjugate base, one fewer hydrogen. This still has a hydrogen ion, so this guy is also amphoteric. It's the conjugate base of H2CO3. It's also the conjugate acid of CO3. So here's another acid-base pair, acid-base conjugate. Right? The bicarbonate ion is amphoteric. Right? It's, um, it's a base to this acid. It's also an acid to this base. Write the conjugate acid uh, for the following. Well, these are going to be easy. Just stick a hydrogen on there, right? One more hydrogen. So HNO2 become, or NO2 becomes HNO2, that's nitrous acid. NH3, we saw this before, this becomes the ammonium ion, NH4 plus. OH, stick a hydrogen on there, we get HOH or simply water.
All right, strengths of acids and bases.